Hi and welcome to another video by Arcus Y Group. We're here on, in Sanctuary Cove in uh, sunny Queensland. Today we're going to be doing a video on installing the range of flexi mesh with the hammer standoffs and the hammer perimeter cables. We're going to be doing some step-by-step -step guides on how to actually install this panel. We're going to show you a real life situation of what it's going to look like at the very end. This is the client's after a really polished architectural look for this balustrade and we feel that this is the best solution for it. So right now I'll just quickly explain uh, the breakdown of what we've got here and what we're going to be installing today. We've got the mesh panels. Uh, a key point about the mesh panels is what you want to do is when you get these mesh panels, you want to have a look at these little identification cards. Make sure they match up with what you've ordered. There's two measurements on them. This one here, 470 mil by 865 mil. Just make sure that they're accurate. Uh, we've got the five mesh panels that we're going to be installing today. We've got some loose eyes and some loose ferrules to be able to crimp onto the perimeter cables. We've got our inline adjusters, our hammer inline adjusters that we're going to be using on the perimeter cables. We've got our hammer uh, coach screw threads that will be going into the wooden balustrade. We have our standoffs, these are the brand new hammer standoffs and we're going to be using these to go into the balustrades as well. We've got some consumables which are the zip ties which I'll explain later on how we use those and we've got some hand tools. Here we've just got a stand with our lacing wire, the 1.5mm lacing wire is the exact same lacing wire that we use on the flexi mesh panel itself. What we've got here on this job site is a 90 by 90 hardwood post. The standoffs need to be in the middle of the post. so. With your square, you set it up at 45 or slightly under 45 so you can get the center of the post, mark it. The standoff we're using today is a single hole flat standoff. The dimension from where the wire bears to the back surface is 45 millimeters. These standoffs are coming off the post so we need to make sure that we're 45 millimeters down from the top. Once you have that mark with a brattle, mark the hole so that you've got a pilot for your drill bit. So we're very fortunate today, we've got Ross Munro here. Ross is one of our sales reps in our team, but also Ross is a licensed carpenter. So Ross is going to quickly explain what we're doing here today with the balustrade and what we do need to take care of in this top handrail. With this installation, we've got uh, a challenge of having a 40mm uh, top handrail as opposed to the 90 by 90 post. So what we've done is we've cut down the timber screw threads on these so we can embed them in the handrail and to do that, we need to basically step up the size of drill bits we do when we pilot these holes to the prescribed depth so we don't blow the top of the handrail out and then we'll have a perfect installation. So with these larger panels, what we need to do is we need to use one of these inline adjusters. Now with flexi mesh, you need it to be tensioned. If we were to use one panel with no supports in the top or the bottom, the panel would sag in under tension. So what we've done here is we're going to be using two of our hammer standoffs, basically separated in the middle, and we're going to be using our inline adjuster right in the middle. So what we've got here with these standoffs is we've got our single hole flats and our base plates. You'll clearly see the hammer so you'll know that it's part of the hammer brand. What we're trying to do here with these standoffs and this base plate is we're just trying to spread that load and share the load over the surface of the deck. These single hole standoffs are rated and they're an engineered solution. What we've got over here with this post is an intermediate post. Now, we could do one of two things here. We could put the standoffs on the side of the post with the short wood screw threads. Other alternative is M12 thread, drill your hole straight through your intermediate post, put your M12 thread through the post, and then fix the two standoffs to the side and compress them onto the post. We find this is a much neater and simpler solution. This is what we're going to be doing today. So as you can see here, we've got the standoffs, the two bits of threaded rod and four base plates so we can basically compress onto either side of the post. So as you can see, all the standoffs are now in place. They're secured into the bottom of the deck, the handrail and the posts. The next step is to get the perimeter cable in place so we can measure and cut it so we can fit it to site. What we've got now is Sean and Ross feeding it around the perimeter through the standoffs. We'll then, once we get to the bottom, measure it 
we can take it away, cut it and swage it on the wire technic swaging machine. So as you know at Arcus Wire Group, we only use the top quality brands here. We've got Felco, these are the C16s. These are gonna be able to cut the uh, six millimeter cable that we've got today. And we've also got an A200 by Wire Technic, market leaders in swaging tools. Basically, we're gonna be using this to swage up these uh, stainless steel hammer swage studs, which will compress onto the wire rope and we'll be using those for the perimeter cables. Just a quick note about the uh, perimeter cable that we are using today. We've gone with a six millimeter seven by seven hammer X strand. The reason why we went with the seven by seven as opposed to the one by 19 is on this balustrade specifically today, we want to use uh, one cable that's going to wrap around the perimeter cable with the inline adjuster as opposed to four individual cables. The 7x7 allows that to bend around the corners nice and easily as opposed to a 119 which is, which is a rigid strand. So this is our Wire Technic A200 machine. Basically it's nice and portable, which is really good for job sites like this. You can get it really close to what you're trying to swage. Uh, so we'll put this down. So as you can see now, the perimeter cable's in place. It's gone through each of the standoffs. We've brought it right back around to the inline adjuster. We've measured it, we've cut it, we've swaged it, and we've locked off these lock nuts so the turnbuckle isn't going anywhere. As you can see, we still have adjustment in the turnbuckle. That's ideal because you do want to have adjustment over time to be able to keep on tightening it up. So the next step is basically placing the panels onto the perimeter cables. The step one in this sequence is basically finding the central point of the panel. Once you've found the central point of the panel, you can get one of the cable ties and basically hang that straight through to the top of the perimeter cable. From there, we work our way out to the corners and we basically secure off each corner. So all I'm doing here is basically grabbing a cable tie and securing it off with every second diamond. So now that the mesh panel's in place and we've got the cable ties secured to the perimeter cable, Sean's now going to run along and he's basically going to tighten off all these cable ties to get the mesh panel into place. Whilst he's doing that, I'll quickly show you. What we're trying to achieve on this is 60 mil by 105. So if we look at these no points and measure up quite, you know, quite roughly, that's actually quite accurate, 60 mil, by 105 mil. So that diamond there is already perfectly in place. So now we've got the cable ties in place, we've secured the cable ties off to the perimeter cable, we've tightened it up and the mesh panel's in the place that we actually want it. Basically we now cut off a manageable piece of the 1.5 mil 77 lacing wire, start at the middle point again and we'll work our way around lacing through every single diamond. As you can see at the tops, we've got these eyes, these compressed eyes. Basically we're going to start at one of those compressed eyes, loop around the perimeter cable, back through the next one. So we've now laced the entirety of the board up. We're back to where we started. So we loop the end of the lacing wire through the starting lacing wire, directly through a loose sleeve. Once both wires are through the loose sleeve, we tape our pliers and we crimp the ferrule. Once we've crimped the ferrule, we then take a pair of wire cutters, cut both of the tails off to leave it nice and neat. Right, so now that the uh, lacing wire is now all the way around the perimeter of the mesh panel, what we're going to do is we're going to go around and get the loose ferrules, locate them to make sure that the aperture of the diamonds looks central. We're going to compress them with the pair of Nipex that we've got. After that's been compressed, we'll be able to work our way around and cut off the cable ties. 
We've finished off the day. We've got all the mesh panels into place. Uh, again, just recapping, this is 60 mil by 105, 1.5 mil flexi mesh. We've used a six mil seven by seven perimeter cable. We've used our brand new hammer standoffs with base plates. These are the single hole flats. Uh, again, just recapping, the reason why we went with the 6mm 7.7 and the inline adjusters was just simply because of the way this balustrade was set up, especially around with the small panel. We just wanted to get one um, cable instead of multiples of four. Basically, we've, we've laced the cable with the 1.5mm lacing wire with loose ferrules. I think it's come up amazing. It's an architecturally designed balustrade. It's compliant with the BCA regulations and it looks amazing. Thank you very much.